I'm Ginny, and welcome to my edition of Ready to Disney Vlog. Vlog, hmm. Blog? Uh, hmm. I mean, it is PowerPoint, so wouldn't that technically be a blog? Uh, I think we're going to stick with vlog. Uh, for Mickey's sake. It's still a vlog. It's going on YouTube, right? Oh, I don't know. Whatever. So, today's entertainment has been brought to you by the letter P for PowerPoint, and I hope that you enjoy it. Now, I know that some of you out there in YouTube land want to actually see me in these videos, why I'm not entirely sure, but... Can you see me now? How about now? So, this edition will be short. Er... Mini? Yeah, mini. Mini... Plus... Vlog. Hmm. I'm not sure. Now, I don't mean mini as in mini mouse. Um, I might cover in a character vlog later. I really don't know. Hello! So, there is this thing called the mini van, which is part of the transportation system at Walt Disney World. And I think Christian has that vlog covered with his transportation so check out his vlog talking about transportation and he will mention the minivan here uh, but I'm not going to be covering that today on this blog vlog so not today so so a few years ago I believe is our first trip to Walt Disney World um, we had stopped in at the Emporium on Main Street Magical, right? Again, another vlog. So like I said, I was in the Emporium on Main Street looking around and minding my own business when I was approached by a very helpful cast member asking if I required any assistance. I noticed that he was wearing a lanyard with some Disney pins on it and I told him that I admired one of them greatly. And to my surprise, he popped it right off and just gave it to me. This magic moment what a really nice guy. I really liked him. He was pretty cool. So keeping this kind gesture in mind, I then began to pay very close attention to all the pens that were offered at each one of the shops. Which prompted Christian to provide a well thought out and highly appreciated birthday gift that following year. I don't think he was really aware of the magnitude of what he started. So what are we covering today? Take a guess. This is some really important stuff, so pay attention. Welcome to Jenny's Top 5 Insider Pin Trading Tips at Walt Disney World. Yeah, try saying that 10 times fast. Jenny's top five insider, Jenny's top five insider pin. Ah, too long. No, 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 no. So to begin, pin trading at Walt Disney World is number one, inexpensive. Well, it is in comparison to most other Walt Disney World things that you can buy or collect there. But if you become a Walt Disney World pin junkie, you might as well sell your house now and live in a tree stump where you can proudly display all of your precious pins to the squirrels. Number two, easily portable in luggage. Unless you heard the f number one thing that I said and then you just have luggage for pins. Number three, it's a great social activity as you actually have to interact with cast members and other traders in order to play along. Now with this, you can just talk to cast members anytime, whenever, um, but it opens a good conversation starter, good opener. Um, hey, how was your day? Um, I like your pin. I think I want to trade. That works really well, so try that. Number four, creates a magical experience with the participating and available cast members on property. See number three. Number five, and it is fun for all ages. All Mouseketeers are able to participate. But there are some special rules for pin trader kids that I will get to later in this vlog. How do you get started? You can buy pins at the parks individually or in packs in bulk or join a pin club. So circling back to Christian's well thought out birthday present for me, 
This is my pen club. This is your water burger. Sorry, inside joke. But now I think good about it. Mm, I could eat right now. World of Walt Pen of the Month Club. Run by Herb Laybacker. Laybaker? Backer? Uh, my apologies, Herb. I tried. I totally get it, though. I mean, my last name is Tatch. Same boat, am I right? So when I said this was my pen trader club, I didn't mean it was my pen trader club. I don't own it. Herb does. He runs it. But this is just merely one of the possible millions of pen trader sites out there that offer clubs like this one. Some even offer buying pens in bulk for the beginner trader, which is a benefit. Um, you'll have a handful of pens ready to go that are either duplicates or part of a collection you don't want to collect or... Either way, you won't feel bad about getting rid of that pin that you actually want to put back in your pocket. Um, so that can be a really beneficial thing. So there's a couple of reasons why this particular club is really special to me other than Christian got me involved in it uh, for my birthday. But um, this club, they've never missed me. They've been there every month, no problem. Well, I mean, as long as you're paying them, they're there every month. But <laughs> this particular club is they, they send two really awesome brand new Disney guaranteed authentic tradable pins every month, being sure to never send a duplicate. But they also personalize the package with a really cool postcard from Herb to which I have been collecting as well. Christian really didn't know what he was getting into. Also with becoming a member of this club, you will receive unexpected bonus gifts and also each month, Dedicated pin trading experts will put together the latest must-know information and assemble it all in a convenient email called Pinsider News. You can stay up to date on the latest trends, new releases, and pin values. Now, I will give you a short moment to write it all down. Every month for every club member, they will donate to America World Adoption to help place a child who needs a family with caring parents. This organization is important to me because I'm also adopted. Visit this organization and donate to awaa.org. This is a Christian international adoption agency who is building families according to God's design of adoption while caring for the vulnerable children around the world. So. What have we learned so far? Disney pins are small, so they easily fit into carry-on luggage. They're relatively expensive as compared to many other souvenir options. And there are plenty of pins to choose from at any Disney souvenir shop or stand. But don't forget your online options. You'll get some pretty good ones there too. In fact, I was amazed at how many pins are available now at the stores in a wide variety of styles and characters. Hunting for the specific ones that I wanted for my collection was a lot of fun, and although I was a complete novice to trading and honestly wanted to keep everything that I bought, the fun is in the trading of the pens, not to mention the experience of meeting and chatting with cast members as you trade. As I discovered pen trading, I added a whole new dimension to my souvenir hunt, and the next time that we go to Disney World, I'll definitely bring more pens to trade with. So upon saying that, so what is pin trading? I hear you out there. Please, Jenny, tell me more awesome pin trader tips you have mentioned before in this slideshow. So I sure can do, Mr. or Mrs. YouTuber person pin trader questioning. Yeah, anyway. So pin trading works exactly as it sounds. Just look for any Disney cast member wearing pins, usually on a lanyard around their neck or a pin board if they're at their station or a cart to get started. But if the lanyard is green, then that cast member will only trade with the kiddos. But any other color lanyard is fair game for anyone. The rules are simple. Pins must be metal with the Disney logo on the back in good shape and still has its Mickey Mouse ears backing on it. If any of these things are missing, they will not trade with you. On a side note though, the cast members with the green lanyards won't run you out or shush you away if you ask to trade with them, but they will tell you that these pins are special hand-picked for the little Mouseketeers and to please leave these pins for them.
please be respectful and understanding of these terms and move along. Okay, I know you've been sitting there waiting for these fantastic insider pin tips that I promised at the beginning of the slideshow and I kind of took you through some other things, but let's get to these tips, shall we? So number one, two at a time. Cast members must trade for any official Disney pin offered to them, except award or service pins or personalized name tags that they wear on their lapels, which can't be traded. Since you'll just be trading them anyway, start with inexpensive pens, whether you like them or not. You can also shop online before you even leave home so that you're ready to start trading as soon as you hit the parks. You can trade up to two pins per cast member per day. Keep in mind that you probably won't be able to trade for the same pins available for purchase in the parks. The ones the cast members wear are usually from collectible sets that have been released over the years. Number two, watch for cast members who are wearing Disney pins. Now I know I mentioned this in a prior slide, but there's a little more to it, so listen up. Keep an eye out as you're walking through the parks for team members wearing pin lanyards. Don't touch any of these pins. They will remove the Disney pin that you want and hand it to you when you ask for it. Give them your pin with the back attached to it and they will then put it on their lanyard themselves. Remember that green lanyards mean the cast member will only trade with the kids. These cast members often have better selection of pins since their trading pool is more limited. And now it's time for a short intermission. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby and have ourselves a treat. Just kidding. Ah, the most beautiful sound to ever come out of Walt Disney World. It makes me all warm and fuzzy inside. Just close your eyes, relax, and enjoy. Hey, if you know where these sounds are coming from, comment in my feed below. That should be a good conversation starter. Number three, find something for storage or display of your Disney pins. Disney themed lanyards are available at most souvenir shops or stands, either by themselves or as part of a themed starter set. Pin books and bags are also available to contain your growing collection. You can also get creative. I saw pins on shirts and vests and hats and they were everywhere. Christian and I have created a viewable layout of all my pins in fairly inexpensive pre-made shadow boxes that were purchased from a local hobby store. This is a fun and organized way to display all of your pins and keep track of the collections that you would like to add to. Sweet, right? <laughs> you like it? Uh, no, you don't like it? Well, fine. I like it. So, eh. Fine. Next slide, please. Number four, add an element of surprise by looking for mystery pins or sets to collect and trade. You can find themed mystery sets too. Just trade away any of the pins in your set that you don't want or already have. New pins are released regularly and Disney comes out with special pins for events and movie openings. So like not so scary Halloween, they would have their own pin sets, um, which we're gonna do this year. That's gonna be so cool. Um, I don't know if there's anything for like after hours, which is what we're doing too, but we'll have to check that out. But I know the Christmas pins are there. Um, they have all kinds of Christmas pins, really cool stuff. But yeah, they, they have the themed ones for the movies. Oh yeah, for Star Wars, they have those. You check those out. Many of the pins being traded aren't available for sale, so pin trading is the only way to get them. You can collect pins along a certain theme from a specific movie or just any that interest you or your kids. Some collectors will also trade pins with guests. You can ask to see if they are willing or not. Pin trading is intended to be free. You should never pay to trade a Disney pin. So if you are asked to pay, walk away. All right, everybody, say it with me. Ooh, ah, whoa. I'm gonna have all of these, all of them. Christian will never know. I'm going to buy them next time I'm there. All right, so we're finally to number five. Number five, watch your backs, your pin backs. All Disney pins come with a Mickey-shaped rubber backing that stays on fairly well under normal circumstances, but if you bump them against anything and they are known to drop off, thus your pin is gone. 
Replacement pin backs are offered for purchase throughout all the parks and they come in other fun shapes and colors. You can even match them up to, you know, whatever main color you have on your pin. That's always fun. Um, but if you plan on wearing your pins on sashes or lanyards, I suggest the locking pin backs, which ensure that your favorites stay in place and not get dropped on the ground and gone forever. Trust me, I've lost one. I cried. It was terrible. Well, all right, Mouseketeers, I had a really wonderful time being your neighbor today, and I hope that you learned a lot about pin trading in Walt Disney World Parks. But if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments, and I will do my very best to answer what I can. And as always, have fun storming the castle! Bye!